Dr. Fizz with the cross product. Now the cross product maps two vectors into a vector and here is the rule. You take the length of one of your vectors, in this case a, and you take the length of the other vector b, multiply them together, and then multiply that by the sine of the angle between the two. But we're not finished. We have a direction given by a unit vector that needs to be included. And the way you find that is by what we call the right hand rule, where if you point along the A direction with this forefinger and here your index finger point along the B, then your thumb gives the answer. Now, to me, this is a little confusing. I prefer to think of the right hand screw driver where when you tighten a screw, you turn clockwise. So if I want to turn A into B, since we have A first here and B second, I would get underneath this ta uh, top. Say this is a tabletop. I would get under the table, put the screwdriver here, and as I turn A into B, I would be advancing upward. Now we can look at this vector given by this magnitude and unit vector, and I'm going to show you here a uh, very simple result if you want to flip these two and have the B first and A second, then I would put the screwdriver on the top and turn this way to tighten and I would be tightening the screw down. So I would turn B into A and the answer would be down, see negative N hat. So when you flip the order here, A and B, you get a minus sign. Let's do the cross products for the unit vectors. If you take i with j, we're turning i into j, say under the table we advance upward, k, like this, k hat. If we flip the i into j, we then get the minus sign, and if we take i with itself, the sign to the angle between a vector and itself is zero, so we get zero. Now for the j, k, if we take the J and turn that into K, I have to be behind this wall, turning that to tighten to get it to come out to I. And then if I flip the J and a K, I get the negative. And when I have the same, I get zero. If I want to turn K into I, I would get to the left of this wall and tighten so that K goes into I, I would advance along J flipping I and K, the minus J, and then zero if they're the same. Now, it's an easier way to remember these rather than taking your screwdriver and going all over the place. If they're in cyclic order, one, two, three, I, J, K, then it's a plus sign. Here, I, J, K, cyclic order means you go from left to right and just come back and see if you're in the order of I, J, K. So you find the I, and now going to the left, going in that order, I have I, J, K, so I'm good. Here I have I, to the right is J, and back here is K, I'm good. So these are all plus, and then if you flip the I and the J, you see you get negative. Or you can think of I, J, K going, the reverse going to the left. I, J, K, reverse, that's negative. Here's I, J, K going left, that's negative. And here's I, J, K, see going left again. So that that's another way. When we do the cross product, in general here, we have nine possibilities, I with I, I with J, I with K. So I've written all these out here, and I have included, of course, the coefficients that go with those. So I with I is going to be AX, BX, I with J, AX, BY, and AX, BZ. And then here is your J cross I, J cross J, J cross K, and you write the coefficients that go with all those. Now when you see these nine terms, the diagonal ones here are going to give you zero because they're the same, and all the others are going to give you non-zero. So I put zero, zero, zero along those, and then here I have to be careful. I'm going to go to my rules and see what the, those are going to be. If I have this one here, I, J, that's going to be a K. So I put a K here. This next one here, J, I, J, I is a negative K. So I put a negative K there. And my next one's J, K here. 
and JK is an I, so I put an I there. My next one's KI, KI says J. And then here KJ, KJ would be up here, that's a negative I, and the last one's zero. So now I group these carefully, I find my I hat, and I see AYBZ, and then there's a negative one here, AZBY, and that's easy to remember because look, these flip. See so AY and then the BZ, and now I have AZ and BY. Then for the J hat one, I go look for them, and I see I have a J here, AZBX, and then I have a negative one up here, AXBZ, and once again, the Z and X got interchanged there. And then for the K hat, I find AXBY, and then for the negative K hat, I find it AYBX. Now, you can remember these by the cyclic rule that you can think of this as X, Y, Z, you know, going to the right and circling like this. And here I have X, Y, Z, but here I have to go backwards to get it to work. X, Y, Z. So you see there's a negative sign. Or just simply flip these two and you're in. Here I have X, Y, Z. So this is the one that's in the correct order. And this one here you would have to think backwards, X, Y, Z, you know, looping this way. Here I have X, Y, Z, and that's cyclic, and then this is the one that's flipped. The determinant does the same thing here. If you use the determinant rule, you take the I hat and have here this two by two where you go A, Y, B, Z minus A, Z, B, Y. And then when you expand the determinant, you have here the minus sign for this. And then you cross out with this line and this line here, and the, the cofactor idea. You take A, X, B, Z, and subtract it with the A, Z, B, X. And finally, for the K hat here, you know, it says plus, minus, plus. So this gets the plus. You have A, X, B, Y, minus A, Y, B, X. And that's the result right there. Another trick is when you do the J hat, if you don't want to mess with that minus sign, you can imagine this being repeated over here, and you would have AZ times here the BX. AZ times the BX, see that's your plus one, and subtract the other one, which would be here BZ, and there would be here an AX. So, so that would be BZ and AX, that's the one with the minus sign. If we go to our notation with the unit vectors being represented by E hats, then we have 1, 2, and 3. And we can write the cross product of the unit vectors with this neat little uh, convention here. This is the Levi Civita or Levi Civita, uh, the symbol here, where if i, j, and k are in cyclic order, 1, 2, 3, you know, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so you 2, 3, 1, if you're going from left to right, they're going to be in order. See, 1, 2, 3, cycle back. You get a plus 1, and if they're interchanged, any two of them are interchanged, say here 1 and 3 is interchanged, um, here, or, excuse me, 2 and 3 interchanged there, this is 1 and 2, then you get the negative sign, and if any two are the same, you're 0. So there is Levi Savita. And if we look at the summation convention here, we can have our two vectors, AI, EI, and then the BJ, BJ. Notice we have to have the different index there because in general we have the nine terms that you saw up in here. We have nine terms. So we have to choose a different index. So we can have a one, one, a one, two, and a one, three, etc. And then we apply the symbol here in there for the cross product and by simply substituting that in we have a nice form for the cross product. With Einstein's summation convention we simply leave out the summation signs and write it like this, the most compact form for the cross product.